Okay. Uh, yeah. Good morning and uh, and happy Friday. It's uh, ninth week Friday, and uh, and so um, what I thought we'd look at today was this. Uh, I thought uh, a neat application of the uh, the Gibbs sampler and uh, and things like that. Uh, and we'll take a look at it today, and then we'll probably um, do the actual coding and the Gibbs sampling on um, on Monday and or you know, at least some of it. And, uh, and I think um, your last homework assignment I'll, I'll have kind of centered around uh, this task. Um, we have the uh, final exam scheduled for next Friday, one week from today. And um, uh, I'm still figuring out some of the details there. So I'm not ready to share uh, what what will be in the um, what will be in the final exam? So, um, just uh, <laughs> I appreciate your patience there, um, and uh, so I'll make sure on Monday to have. Um, um, I'll make sure on uh, Monday to uh, to go over what what you can expect for uh, for Friday's uh, final exam. So um, yeah, okay, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and. Um, Take a look here. Um, so, the uh, the idea here is we can um, apply Gibbs sampling for a kind of a natural language processing application. So uh, natural language processing is um, often abbreviated NLP. And, uh, and so this is kind of like another popular area of, uh, of data science is that, you know, we have all of this text data and, uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to work with. And so there's a lot that in, uh, is involved in turning the text data into kind of numeric data and things like that. Okay, so anyway, um, the uh, the application is document clustering. Okay, this is um, document clustering. Here, the idea is you have uh, several documents. several or many, <laughs> several to many documents, okay? And documents, okay? Documents is just basically text, okay? A document is text. Okay, so it could be it could be like uh, a Wikipedia article, it could be uh, a tweet, it could you know so these could be short documents like just like tweets or, or would be considered a document, or it could be like an entire Wikipedia article, it could be uh, a newspaper article. It's just it's just a bunch of text. Okay, so um, it can be short documents like tweets. or, you know, longer docs, like newspaper articles or book chapters. And we're just looking at the, uh, the text in these, uh, in these things. Okay, and, uh, and so uh, with document clustering is, we, um, you know, the computer will quote unquote read these documents and then try to kind of group them together into clusters, okay?
and try to group. And we'll try to group similar uh, documents together, okay? Um, so an interest, uh, uh, I guess what makes this challenging is that there are no predefined clusters or cl um, no predefined clusters. The, um, the uh, algorithm kind of needs to kind of discover the clusters on its own, right? Um, so no predefined clusters uh, algorithm must quote unquote discover the clusters on its own. Um, okay, what we do need to do is we do need to specify how many clusters to search for. Okay, uh, contrast this, okay? So this is um, document clustering is generally a harder task than document classification. So document classification already is a, so document clustering, this would be an unsupervised problem. And that the data is just kind of raw, they're not labeled or things like that. Okay, document classification um, is supervised in that you have training data Okay, the, uh, the training data is labeled. Uh, with classes already. Okay, so the training so in document classification, the training data is already labeled, and then a new document comes along. And then you try to figure out the uh, the label of this new document you know, mostly by kind of comparing it against the already existing uh, documents and classes, okay? Training da data is labeled with classes. Um, a new test document appears. And then we try to classify this new document. Okay, so that's generally considered an easier problem. Okay, uh, but, but today's problem is document clustering. So let's talk about um, document clustering here and, uh, and how we're going to go uh, pull this off. Okay, so um, I'm going to follow um, kind of, there's, a, there's an article that I will uh, share with you guys, okay? It's called Gibbs Sampling for the Uninitiated. Um, that's what this um, lesson is based on. And so there's a there's a whole bunch of uh, kind of terminology and um, and uh, notation to uh, to get a handle of. Okay, 
All right, so we're going to just start off with a, a simple example. Okay, simple example where we're going to search for two clusters in our documents. Okay. And so, um, so this, this is a, I guess, fa fancy C, all right? And this is our corpus, okay? And the corpus is gonna be all of the documents that we have. And then we're going to have uh, C0. And this will be um, kind of the all of the documents labeled 0. OK. And then just regular old C, not fancy C. OK, regular C is going to be the count or the number of documents um, the count of documents um, labeled zero. Okay, or basically um, the um, how many documents are inside of C zero, right? Okay, and then so on the other side we've got C one and little c1, okay? So this is would be the count of docs labeled one. And this is all documents. Labeled one, okay? And um, what we are going to do is the documents are going to be um, uh, recorded in our uh, system using the bag of words model. Okay, so um, documents um, using the bag of words. Okay. All right. And so the, uh, uh, in the bag of words model, the idea is, um, <laughs> it's like you take the, uh, you take a document, like imagine printing out um, a, an article on a piece of paper, and then you take scissors and you cut every single word out, and then you just drop them into a bag, okay? And that's going to be the bag of words, all right? And, and what that means is that the order of the words don't matter, okay? It's just the only thing that really matters is, is that you have um, this many words <laughs> and uh, what words appear in there and how, how the frequency of those words, okay? So uh, we just treat documents as kind of uh, a bunch of words and their and and their frequencies whereas the actual structure um, does does not matter okay so um, so imagine um, a, an article printed out okay we cut each word out, cut out each word and drop it into a, a bag. Okay, so the idea is you got some kind of 
these are the things that you, you cut out each kind of word and then we have all these little pieces and they go into okay and so this is the bag these are the uh, the words and so um so again order of words do not matter okay um doc uh, documents are just treated as a list of words and their frequencies. Okay, and so just some shortcomings of this model shortcomings would be that uh, the the following two documents would be treated exactly the same or would have the exact same representation okay representation in this model despite different meetings i'm sorry i don't know what's going on with my dog okay so if one document like you can imagine a, a tweet being treated as a document and somebody says, I'm not upset, I'm happy. Hashtag election, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then, okay, what, whatever it is, right? And then, uh, and then the other document says, I'm not happy, I'm upset. Okay, and in, in both cases, the the document uh, the bag of words. Um, if we go um, in alphabetical order, we'll be happy one uh, H I I'm two uh, not one and upset one. Okay, this would be kind of the both both the documents would be represented this way in the bag of words model. It would say I'm shows up twice, not shows up once, upset shows up once, happy shows up once. Okay, and and these have very different meanings, but again, because we're just cutting the words out on cutting the words out and dropping them into a bag, um, and we just kind of <laughs> Say, all right. Here's the uh, here's the bag. I've sorted out the words. Um, we'll have no idea um, uh, what this is, right? So, um, so anyway, the uh, the bag of words model works best if there's a um, there's a strong link between the words and the subjects, right? between um, words and subjects. Okay, subjects or topics. So for example, you know, the word happy is not going to be a very informative word because there's a lot of things that maybe show up with um, 
that use the word happy. Okay. Whereas um, something like if if you see a document with the word Bayesian, okay, then it's like oh. Um, this is probably about statistics or machine learning or data science or something like that, right? Like, because I mean, how many in how many contexts do you hear the word Bayesian? And uh, and as soon as you hear the word Bayesian, like like if you were at a restaurant and you over okay, well I don't know if we go to restaurants anymore these days, but if you, if you were somewhere and you overhear someone else say the word Bayesian, you it would probably cause your ears to perk up and you'd be like, oh someone else a, a stats major or someone studied data science or something and, and and it's kind of exciting in that way right it may be exciting for me um but uh you know other, other things um other, other words you know might not like if the word run the word run you know it's it's not strongly linked with any one subject right maybe we're talking about baseball maybe we're talking about um getting your computer program to run and things like that so, uh, so who knows um, what that's going to be? Okay. Whereas, um, you know, other words such as like compiler or something, you'd be like, oh, okay, that's most likely a computer <laughs> programming situation or something like that. So, if, so if there's strong links between words and subjects or topics, the bag of words model is going to work well. Okay. So, but for certain stuff like this, you know, again, the structure doesn't isn't uh isn't considered and so you know sometimes i see people try to do um sentiment analysis on like tweets and things using a bag of words model but but again if you're trying to do sentiment analysis one of these things has a positive sentiment and the other has a negative sentiment but they would have the exact same representation in the bag of words model um which which shows you know kind of severe limitations of the uh, of the bag of words model, you know, for that application. Okay, is this all okay so far? This is mostly just kind of talking about some some concepts from um, uh, natural language processing. Let me give give you your uh, first quiz answer for today. Uh, first quiz answer is e e as an elephant. E as an elephant is your first quiz answer for today. Okay, so this is, we're going to have a very, very, very simplified document creation model. All right, so uh, the question, does this work well for all languages? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think there's, um, I think it works well for many languages, many languages where, um, uh, where meaning is ascribed to the, to the words, but then, you know, in certain languages, um, um you know like depending on kind of the word conjugation will change the uh, the meaning and the the action and things like that so for example like in uh, in japanese you have these different word endings and depending on the word ending it will change whether it's um an active or a passive verb and things like that and um um and the at least the system we're using today um, looks at is going to perform word stemming okay and so word stemming is the idea that you're just looking for the uh the root of of a word so for example um uh the word happy and happiness and okay maybe that wasn't a good example but happy and happiness would would get stemmed down to the same root and um you know, uh, school, schools, schooling, um, th those would all kind of get stemmed down to the uh, the same same root as well. Um, and and 
and here in, in English, you're not losing too much if you stem a word down to its root, whereas um, in other languages, you lose a lot when you do something like that. So, um, so I guess it, so it depends on the language. So you, you gotta, um, just like anything else, it's, it's dangerous to apply some kind of technique to, some, to a subject that you're unfamiliar with. Okay. All right, so um, we have an extremely simplified document creation model um, for basically um, documents and with two possible labels. Okay, zero or one. Okay, and so we're going to start off with a Bernoulli, uh, Bernoulli trial with uh, pi. Okay, so parameter pi. is kind of the, uh, the probability of zero or one, okay? Which will be the, um, the document label. Okay, and then Basically, what, what we're going to have is if class zero, we have a lexicon associated. We have a, I guess, a word probability lexicon. For class zero. Okay, so um, so if you recall the text de deciphering thing, there was um, you, we had a, a, this lexical database, and it had all of these words, and every single word had a different probability associated with it. Right? We had like the word the, and that said it shows up around five percent of the time, and the word a shows up this percent of the time, and the word <laughs> apple shows up this percent of the time, and banana shows up this percentage of the time and things like that. And um, uh, um, and, and so you have all of these things, OK? Uh, and what we're saying is that depending on the class of the document, the, the probabilities in our lexicon will be different, OK? So um, and then for class 0, there is. Uh, another word probability lexicon. Okay, so for example, let's say class zero was on fruit. The topic is fruit. And class one, the topic is sports. Okay. So for, I don't know, Apple might show up with probability 0.015. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, this should be class one, you're right. Okay, and then so for class one, we have another thing. Okay, so we have <laughs> words like apple and banana and and maybe this shows up with probability 0.018. OK, but then um, word like ball and goal. OK, maybe this would show up with probability 0 0.0001 and 0 0.0002 or something like that. OK, whereas um, for sports, the word apple we would expect she would show up with very, very low probabilities. Okay, and same with banana.
and the word ball probably shows up much more commonly. And goal also shows up with greater frequency. All right, and, and so on and so forth. And you have all of these. So, you know, the lexicons are, are big in that you've got thousands of words or something, okay? And so anyway, this, um, this will be, you know, our lexicon. And then from the lexicon, we use a multinomial distribution to generate a bag of words. Okay, same, same over here. Okay, I'm not, are you guys familiar with the multinomial distribution? Okay, so the multinomial distribution is the multi categorical generalization of the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution, you have a probability of success. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, slide here. Okay, is, it, is this okay for our generative model? So the um, So just, um, okay, so just maybe a detour. All right, so the binomial distribution. You have n trials. Uh, each trial has probability theta. Of uh, success or failure. Okay, and then so, um, and basically um, a random binomial with n equal to 10 and p equal to 5. I'm sorry, not p, theta, theta equal to 0.5, n equal to 10, and theta equal to 0 0.5 could produce a random value like 6. Okay, so this is how many, how many times will a coin land heads if we flip it 10 times? Will a fair coin land heads in 10 flips? Okay. Um, and the conjugate prior of the binomial prior for uh, theta in the binomial. is the beta distribution. All right, and, uh, and beta produces a value of theta between zero and one. The beta distribution zero and one for theta. Okay, so I think we're all okay with that, right? So that's the, uh, that's the binomial distribution and the beta distribution. And uh, okay, 
So then we have the multinomial distribution. Okay, and here, this is kind of a, a generalization for more than two classes, okay? Generalization of uh, the binomial for more than two classes. Okay, so here we have n trials. Okay, and then a vector of length, I guess, k, of length k uh, of probabilities. For each class uh, of probabilities for the, I guess, the possible classes. Okay, so and then so you're going to have basically a vector theta, which will consist of theta one, theta two, theta three, dot, 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 to theta k, right? And then um, kind of a requirement is that if you sum all of the theta values, theta from i equal one to k, the sum of the thetas have to be one, okay? So an example would be you get this spinner um, do this. Okay, and so you have like category one, category two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then you're going to spin, spin the wheel 20 times and we ask how many times did it land one, how many times did it land two, three, four, and five, right? Land on each space. Okay, so you know one possible random draw will be something like. Um, here, wait, you know, let me change this to letters A, B, C, D, E, just so that we don't get confused here. <laughs> so we've got A. B, C, D, and E. Okay. And so we could say, well, with 20 spins, it showed up A landed on three times, B landed on uh, three times, C landed on two times, D landed on five times, and E landed, I don't know, it's got to add up to 20. So what, what is this? Three, three, and two is eight. Five, okay, and E landed seven times or something like that, okay? And that, that, that's one possible draw. And, but again, if somebody else spun it 20 times, they would get different outcomes, okay? But this, is, this would be one possible creation of um, a multinomial distribution. And this is kind of what we are saying for our word generation model, okay? Or document generation model is that here we've got this lexicon of word probabilities, except rather than having five possible categories, 
we probably have, you know, thousands, thousands of possible words that can appear in my, my, um, my document. Each word has a different probability and we're going to just produce, we might say, give me a document with uh, uh, of length, you know, 100 words or something like that. And if I have a document with 100 words in it, how many times do these words show up in my document? Okay. And, and basically the idea here is, you know, if it's a document of class zero, you know, the kind of the word probability wheel, <laughs> okay, um, you know, looks a certain way. And if it's a document of class one, the, uh, the proportions on that wheel are different with some, some words having bigger spots, other words having smaller, smaller spots. Does, it, does that kind of make sense there as far as the document creation goes? Okay. Um, and so the conjugate prior, all right? So the conjugate prior, does anyone know what the conjugate prior for a multinomial would be? I don't think you've known this. Okay, conjugate prior for a multinomial distribution, for a multinomial is the Dirichlet. Okay, and it's, it's basically the, um, It's kind of like the beta distribution, except rather than producing one value between zero and one, it produces a vector theta that will add up to one that you could then use um, in the, uh, um, that, that you could then use for the multinomial distribution, okay? Is the Dirichlet distribution. So the Dirichlet produces a vector theta, okay, that can be used um, in the multinomial distribution. All right. Yeah, and then you know the vector theta sums to one. Sum to one. Probably, I don't know, until next year, but it'll shut down now. I don't know. Oh. Hang on a second. <laughs> my, uh, my daughter's going to school and uh, uh, via her iPad, and she accidentally clicked the um, airplay, and it started broadcasting on our TV at, like, full blast volume. <laughs> That's like your, um, it's always like a, a nightmare of like, you're watching a video and then you accidentally broadcast it to the, uh, the living room or something. Okay. Um, all right. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the multinomial um, distribution and the, uh, the Dirichlet. So, so, um, so there are some, you know, kind of some parallels. Okay. So the beta distribution, you have two shape parameters, has two parameters, um, alpha and beta. And these are kind of, uh, we can think of these as um, alpha and beta can be thought of as pseudo counts. pseudo counts of success and failure, right? So if you have kind of beta five comma five, the resulting distribution 
looks like this from zero to one and we have 0.5. Whereas beta 500, 500 between zero and one will look like this, right? Meaning um, it, cause it's, it's like you've observed 500 successes and 500 failures. And so you get something centered um, very tightly around 0.5. Okay. And if you have beta say um, 20 comma 80 between zero and one, you'd have a distribution kind of closer to 0 0.2 with a little bit more spread or something like that. Okay, is this okay for the beta distribution um, as far as understanding the, uh, the shape? Okay, and so the, uh, the Dirichlet would have, um, has a vector um, so it's just like the alpha vector of length k um, of quote pseudo counts, pseudo counts of each kind of category. So um, so let's say alpha is equal to um, two comma two comma two. Okay. So so here we would have basically category one, category two, category three. Each of these will kind of be um, pretty identical here between zero, one, and category three. So each one, like if you look at each individual category individually, it almost looks like a beta distribution. Okay. Um, Let's say we have alpha is equal to um, two comma eight. Uh, let's see. Um, let's get everything to add up to twenty somehow. Okay, so let's do two, um, eight, and um, I don't know, two, six, and twelve. Okay, so category one, category two, and category three might look something. So for category one, because we only have two, <laughs> um, we might have uh, a distribution that looks like this, uh, kind of centered closer to point one. Okay, for category two, um, if it adds up to we might have uh, something that centered closer to point three. Okay. And then category three, 12 out of 20, we might have something like this, okay? Zero, something closer, you know, I don't know, centered isn't the right word, but something something like that, okay? Um, does, that, does that kind of make sense, All right? And so, um, so, so alpha might something like, look like this and then, you know, a random draw from from Dirichlet 2, 6, 12 could be something like 0 0.12, point, uh, 
three one and point um, these have to add up to so what's that 33 so point six seven okay could be uh, this vector okay or another Oh, wait. oh, I'm I'm way over time. Okay, so anyway, that's <laughs> uh, so that would be kind of the uh, the Dirichlet distribution and what what it could produce here. Okay, so why don't we um, stop here? How many quiz answers I've given you? Just one, huh? Okay, the the last two for uh, today are C and B, cat and bear. C and B for the last two quiz answers for today. Um, C, cat and bear for the uh, the last two quiz answers. Okay. We'll uh, we'll end here. Have a good weekend you guys. We'll uh, we'll continue on and uh, and uh, and this was just a bit of an intro of the idea and uh, and we'll uh, we'll actually make the Gibbs sampler um, next week on Monday. Okay. We'll see you guys.